Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. Okay, top tip number 12. This follows on from top tip number 11, where we change the aspect ratio um, from a 3.2 to a 16.9, i.e. here's the original aspect ratio of the image as captured by the camera. And then we've created a 16.9 image cleverly using content aware scale without distorting the, uh, the man in this image, basically stretching out the background, but leaving the man intact. Very clever stuff. But this uh, next top tip is to do with the color, um, is how we can control the luminance or brightness of that or any specific color in this image uh, without changing its saturation value. Now, um, this is one of uh, the uh, editing uh, workflows inside of Photoshop that is a little bit obscure. Now, if we've been working inside of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, we have a HSL panel and the luminance controls the brightness of the colors, no problem. But Photoshop uh, is not so blessed. For instance, if we come in with an adjustment layer such as Hue Saturation, which has a lightness slider, if I select the reds in this image and adjust the brightness of those reds, the lightness of those reds, as I drag it all of the way down, it desaturates the reds completely. If I make them brighter, Likewise, it does exactly the same thing. Okay, so in order to make a color lighter, basically Photoshop is mixing either black or white into the mix and also desaturating. Okay, I'll just double click on the word lightness to zero that slider. And we basically need to come out of this adjustment layer because I can't adjust the brightness of this red uh, cravat um, using this dialog. There is a way forward, however, okay? And so let's just uh, delete this uh, adjustment layer and pick up the adjustment layer that can do the trick, and that is black and white. Not so obvious, is it? Because now we've managed to desaturate all colors, okay? But if we change the blend mode of the black and white adjustment layer to luminosity, okay? We're, uh, we're going to restore all of those color values. Now the default color values for this black and white adjustment layer uh, are not absolutely clean. Okay, so if I um, deselect or switch off the visibility of this black and white, you will see some of the colors shift, i.e. the reds are a little bit light. Now I've actually worked out uh, slightly better default values. And so if you want to uh, pay attention as I bring in my ESP luminance, you'll see now we have no difference with the adjustment layer switched on and off. So these are better default values. And uh, I'll just scroll down so you can see them all there, uh, just in case you want to make your own preset okay, from those values. Okay, now that I've um, uh, created basically no difference whatsoever, I can simply grab my reds or I could select this uh, on image tool basically going in and clicking inside the image to make the reds darker or lighter. And isn't that good? Okay, so if I wanted the cravat a little bit richer and darker, okay, the saturation value is staying the same, then uh, I've basically affected that by adjusting the reds value only in this image. Now, um, because that will impact on the uh, skin tone slightly, I do have this adjustment layer mask. If I select the brush tool and uh, select black as my foreground color, uh, you can just press the D key for defaults and then the X key to select uh, the foreground as black. Now I've got um, a brush that's really quite small here. So I'm just going to increase the size of that substantially. You can actually use the square bracket keys to do this. Um, I'll just use the uh, closed square bracket keys. And uh, by uh, pushing that in at a 100%, uh, I can quite easily restore the original uh, luminance values of uh, the man's skin there. Okay, so that's um, controlling luminosity using a black and white adjustment layer in luminosity blend mode. Okay, okay, not quite as simple as just doing it inside of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, but sometimes we need those tools inside of Photoshop as well, and this is the best way to achieve that outcome.